was working on a project the other day and it is a project that I'm going to be teaching um, in an online class uh, in our fall schedule. Can't remember the date yet. Jess has been working so hard on a fall catalog. It is almost done and it's absolutely incredible. And one of the classes that I'm going to be teaching is a table runner. And it uh, is actually going to be broken up into a few different segments because one, uh, uh, one of the sessions, it has three different blocks in this table runner. And one of them is on paper piecing, and I'll show you that. I'm, I'm giving you a little sneak peek of what the table runner looks like. I, it's going to be a Christmas table runner. Obviously, you can use any fabrics that you want, but this is the piece that I did that is actually paper pieced. Isn't that beautiful? So this is with the new Holly Berries line from one of my favorite designers, Corey Yoder. So this one is paper pieced. And then there's uh, a lesson in there on this block, which is a stitch and flip block, a stitch and flip book. But then there's another block that is all about using templates. Okay, so that's going to be this block right here. What do you guys think of that? Do you like that one? It's actually in the table runner. It is actually set on point. Okay, set on point like this. So all of those blocks are going to go together and the background of those blocks in between, I'm so excited, is this beautiful fabric. Look at that. So I love that charcoal gray. Let's see if I can get this a little bit better. So these are going to be set on point, and then this charcoal gray is going to be in between them. So I've got my blocks done. I just need to finish uh, putting my uh, sashing in. Or there we go. <laughs> there we go. Something like this, if you can kind of get an idea. Isn't that beautiful? So again, the class comes up. Uh, I don't remember what day it is, but the catalog will be out very soon. But the reason that got, it, this got me thinking was that on this block in particular, it was calling for templates. So I thought what I would do today is talk to you about my little hack that I do when it comes to templates because I actually don't have template plastic around. I hardly ever use template plastic. And when things call for templates, um, they're wanting you to purchase template plastic for it. Now, if I were doing an entire quilt and it was all based on templates, it is going to be a virtual class, Mary, Mary Carol. It is going to be a virtual class. So uh, when things call for templates and if I don't have them and I'm not going to use a ton of them because like in this example, th this is the only block that we use the templates on. Templates is, is what looks like this. Have you seen those before? or for a pattern that calls for that. Take a look here. So basically you have that solid line is your outline of what you're cutting your fabric, but, the, or excuse me, the of where you're sewing, the outside edge, which is dashed, is where you are cutting your fabric, okay? So normally what you would do is you would actually tape it to the back of template plastic, um, trace it, and then cut out the template plastic, and then you gotta go back and now trace it onto your fabric and all that. So I'm gonna give you my little sewing hack that I do when it comes to templates because it's gonna save you a couple steps, plus it's gonna save you some money without having to go out and buy template plastic. All right, so that's what I'm gonna talk to you about today. So the item that I use when it comes to doing templates is something that you might already have in your home. And if not, you can find it um, in the grocery store. And it is called freezer paper. How many of you use freezer paper? Yep, Betty Jo says she uses cereal box, cardboard. 
Um, this is going to be even easier for you, Betty Jo. Okay. Yep, freezer paper. You are right. So freezer paper you will usually find like in the butcher section of the store. Um, let me cut this off a piece. It has a shiny side to it and then a, a dull side, the paper side. Okay. So let me go ahead and get situated here and I'll show you what I do. Okay. So let me just pull this back a little bit and bring it down here. And where did my pattern go? Right here. Okay. So what I'll do with this is I will put it down and trace it. Now I have another tip for you here, guys. If you are having a hard time seeing your white paper through, um, you're, you're having a hard time seeing your pattern through the freezer paper, one of my little tips is to do it on a surface that is white. Now certainly if you have a light box, you can do it that way. But let's say you don't have a light box around, or say you don't want to go to a window and tape it up. But you're, if you're doing it on your cutting mat and you're having a hard time seeing it, actually a better suggestion is to take it over to a table that is white and it will show up better okay so what I'm doing here is I don't even need to trace the solid line I just need to trace my um, my outer line the line that I'm gonna cut on and I'm just doing it right now without uh, any ruler but that's a small piece if I wanted to oh, let me pull this over here if I wanted to if I had a bigger piece then probably what I would do is I would actually take just a little ruler and well let me um, let me show you okay here's another tip okay uh, let me move this around I will actually t do kind of a dot to dot and I know it's really hard you guys can't see it very well but trust me when I say there's an, an end point right there an end point right here an end point right there end point end point end point okay because if I were to take my ruler over right away I would probably have a difficult time seeing where exactly the beginning and the end was but by going ahead and tr and just putting dots on those endpoints now it's like doing let me um, set this up it's like doing a dot to dot okay so now I can take my ruler and I'm going to match up to this dot because I can see it and I'm going to match up to that dot because I can see it and now I trace my line from dot to dot now I'm I went a little ski wampus there and that's okay it's because I'm not on a flat surface I'm doing half of it on the cutting board and half of it on the table okay and then I'm gonna do another dot to dot and another dot to dot and now well now I've got another dot to dot I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna go this way from dot to dot like that and I have my three dots up here boom and boom okay all right so you can kind of see what's happening there right now what I do is I go ahead and cut that out okay just exactly on the line okay I'm going to throw that away for right now because I've already pre-cut these and I want to show them to you because it's like the magic of television, right? <laughs> I'm bringing something out of the oven before it's all baked. Okay, so yeah, Ruth says before she's used a, used a light box. And absolutely, you could use a light box. You could tape it up to the window. You could do all of those things. But if you don't, if you're not nearby a window or you don't want to get up to do that, if you don't have a light box, then, then these are the things that you can do. Just do your dot to the dots. 
Okay, so you can see that I have traced them all. And if you're gonna be in my class, obviously we'll go into more detail of how this all, block all comes together. But the point of today is not to necessarily talk about how the block comes together. It's more to give you the tip of using freezer paper rather than trying to go and, and do a template, okay? So you can see here that my letter is B and I need four of them. You'll also notice something kind of interesting. Let's see if I can pull this up. Do you see how those tips are a little bit different? Uh, the tips, this is really nice when it comes to doing uh, template piecing is because when you have those tips cut in, in different directions like that, it actually makes lining up the pieces so much easier so much faster all right let's see if i've got any of these done these all might yeah all right so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to take you over to the ironing station and let's come right over here look how cute my iron is there by the way oh look that's my new favorite saying <laughs> be a nice human <laughs> and notice there's peanut M&Ms right there, right? <laughs> be a nice human. That's all that matters, guys. Just be nice. Nice goes a long way. Okay, so let's, uh, I'm going to pull my little thingamajigger off here. Do, you need little scissors? Do we have any questions? Table clear. Do, do, do. Trying to get freezer paper since COVID began. It always is out of stock. Really? Wow, that's interesting. Oh my gosh, why is that going off that way? You guys, the weirdest thing is happening. My Alexa thingamajigger, whatever you call it, is keeps asking me, do you mean Little Caesars? <laughs> do you mean Little Caesars? Do you mean little Caesar? I have no idea what it's doing. It's crazy. It's possessed. I don't know what's happening. Okay. Weird. All right. So, I have my fabric. Weird stuff, you guys. Let me pull this. Here we go. Okay. So, I have my little piece of paper here. And wait, the, the cool thing about doing freezer paper is that this is going to iron on to the back of my fabric. Betty shows it says it was a, it was a pizza part. So weird, random, right? I don't know. So this is going to iron on onto the back. There is no um, residue that's left on this. Uh, it comes right off. You can reuse it. I've already used this all, you know, for another block. I'm going to use it again and I'm going to show you. Oh, yeah, you guys are saying she probably thought you said, Do you need scissors? And it said, Sweet Sarah. I know. It's crazy, right? I'm surprised she isn't playing Sweet Caroline. Oh, that's what I could do. I could have her play Sweet Caroline. I think I'm going to try it. Okay, so I'm going to put this on. Let's go down here. Do, do okay and just do this oh, look and actually you could do it on the front too okay just depends Ooh. and then you're gonna cut just right outside there so you could cut with scissors or you could cut with your ruler either way so um, this this one doesn't matter whether I cut on the back or on the front it doesn't matter because it's it's the same all the way around if you had one and usually patterns will tell you this uh, let me look and see if I can find one um, I'm not seeing where I did have one that it depended on the direction let me pull this this one Let's see, this one right here, it tells you that you need four going in one direction, four going in the other direction. So all you have to do is you stack up your, you can do, you know, six layers at a time. You could do eight layers at a time. You're gonna put them, you know, one side up, 
one side down, one side up, one side down, and then that way when you put on that, you'll have them in two different directions, okay? So just pay attention to what the, the thing is telling you, what the, your patterns tell you. But basically what I want you guys to know is that when you iron this on, it stays on. This is very similar to how we do like uh, st stack and whack uh, patterns, if you're familiar with that. And then, see, it's not gonna come off. You don't need any pins. And then you just peel it right off. And then you can reuse it again, and you can reuse it again. So I, that's how I do templates. I do them with good old fashioned freezer paper. And I just stick them on, and then I put my ruler and my rotary cutter right up next to it take my little scissors to trim my tips and I am good. So what do you guys think? Uh, yes, Mary Carol says right on the dull side, shiny to the fabric. Yep. This is the dull side. This is the paper side. And then you've got the shiny on the back. So, yep. Uh, yeah, my seam allowance is already on the template. Now, when you look at the pattern, uh, it will, it's telling me that the, the sewn line is in dark, it's solid, and that my cut line is out here. So it's already built the quarter and seam allowance into it. So I don't even pay attention to the solid line. I'm just paying attention to the dashed line because the dashed line is the cut. I'll get the, I'll get the quarter inch, you know, when I sew it. So, yeah. All right. Yeah, you know what, Marianne, you're right. I probably said little scissors, and it said, do you mean little scissors? <laughs> I don't know. It was so random. All right. Chrissy said, I wondered why I had freezer paper in my sewing room. <laughs> Better put it back there. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, I use freezer paper all the time. It's wonderful, wonderful product to have in your sewing room. Okay. Uh, Terry says, I've never done paper piecing before. Can't wait for the class. Oh, oh, Terry, paper piecing is so much fun. I love to paper piece. And look at that. Is that a gorgeous block or what? This would be a very difficult block to get without paper piecing. Certainly, you could do this block without paper piecing, although uh, we still do. But it's these blocks that would be very difficult to do without paper piecing. So I absolutely love, love, love it. And uh, paper piecing for the win on that one. Uh, template piecing for the win on this one. And stitch and flip for the win on this one. Okay, so in my class, I'm gonna teach all three methods so it's going to be kind of cool because we're going to learn a lot of different techniques in the class while making a gorgeous table runner and you can do it for christmas you could do it for halloween you could do it for every day it doesn't matter but you're going to learn some really great techniques right